Red Ice Radio is what you are listening to. RedIceCreations.com is our website, and we're delighted to have you with us today. My name is Henrik Palmgren, and if you have been following our website for the last year or more, you know that we put focus on many of the earth changes and space anomalies that have been reported by the media, the alternative press, and individuals on their own blogs, websites, and YouTube channels. Obviously, there's so much that it's practically impossible to keep up with it all, but some of the major stories have been about Magnetic North, now being on the move, strange spirals have been appearing over Norway, Australia, Mongolia, New Zealand and Russia. There have been birds falling out of the sky around the world, heralding some kind of apocalypse. A mirage city mysteriously appeared in China in June. A portal-like light burst bubble or whatever it was was seen over Hawaii. And the sun rose two days early for our friends up in Greenland. There have been strange plasma light phenomena in Fort Worth, Texas and many other places as well. Low rumbles and hums are reported. There are also people saying that the sunrise and sunset has shifted, that it's setting more towards the north, and that the quality of the light is different, and some people even claim that the stars are displaced, and the moon is consequently also behaving strangely. And then we have the usual strangeness continuing as well. Increased amounts of earthquakes, strange weather patterns, sinkholes have opened up in different places around the globe and strange bright lights are being reported around the world. And while some of these strange phenomena might be a consequence of technology or experimentation, I don't think it explains everything. And the suggestion is of course that something else is going on and the question is what? Maybe we're making a mistake when we're connecting all of these different phenomena, but they are nonetheless all contributing to the sense of strangeness that something is going on. And who knows, maybe the strangeness just has begun. John Lash is back with us on the program today to talk about Sophia's correction and what might be the reason then for many of these anomalies. John Lash is a self-educated freelance scholar who combines studies and experimental mysticism to teach directive mythology, that is the application of myth to life, rather than its mere interpretation. He is a leading exponent of the power of myth to direct individual experience and drive historical events over the long term. He is an expert on sidereal mythology, naked eye astronomy, precession and the world ages. He also teaches the critique of belief systems. And on metahistory.org, his website, he presents a radical revision of Gnosticism with original commentaries on the Nag Hammadi codices. He also presents the only complete restoration by any scholar of the Sophianic myth of the pagan mysteries, the sacred story of Gaia Sophia, recounting the origin of the earth and the human species from the galactic core. Stay with us for the next two hours for a very intriguing discussion. Welcome back to Red Eyes Radio, John Lash. It is uh, great to have you back with us uh, again. It's over a year ago since we talked with you uh, last, and, and so many things have have unfolded, obviously. So many things have happened, uh, and we have a, a, a lineup of interesting things we're going to talk with you about here. But uh, first of all, then, John, welcome back. How are you today? I'm very fine, Henry. Thank you so much for having me on again. It's a pleasure and a privilege. Absolutely, it's uh, really good to talk to you, and uh, I I, um, I wanted to have you back because primarily uh, I got an email from you um, a few, few days ago, maybe a week ago now, in terms of something that you termed Sophia's correction. Um, you included a video in the email, and and um, one who took the time to watch it could obviously see some pretty interesting things in regards to uh, well, basically spanning from the Western media covering this aspect of the shifting of the magnetic north, all the way over to uh, the Inuits uh, of the northern parts uh, on, on around the Arctic regions, talking about primarily the the uh, the setting and, and the rising sun, the shifts and the changes that has happened in that. Uh, and, and this is a big topic, obviously. This is a very interesting one. We, uh, if, if we go back a little bit more into the news record, so to speak, John, we could uh, bring up this news item from Greenland as well. M people might recall uh, stories coming out from Greenland that the sun was actually rising two days early. 
And a lot of these different little anomalies connected with the sun, connected with the magnetic field, seems to be kind of... Um, you know, piling up, if you will, uh, John. What, what What is your take on this? Tell us a little bit about this, Sophia's correction. Well, Sophia's correction is a term taken from the Gnostic writings of Nagamadi. It's found in those texts. Uh, it's a it's a theme or clue, you might say, that was left to us by the Telestai, who were the ancient seers who directed the mystery schools uh, and the uh, ancient schools of initiation. In, uh, in Europe and the pagan world. And it's a very intriguing clue, uh, Sophia's connection, uh, be, uh, for a number of reasons. First of all, uh, because the myth of Sophia, the story of the goddess Sophia, that was the centerpiece and guiding vision of the mysteries, is really the only true planetary myth that we have that explains the origin of the earth and the origin of humanity, and also explains as well the presence of predatory uh, extraterrestrial beings uh, in our world. It explains a great many things. Now, I recovered and restored this myth from my study of the Gnostic materials. I want to point out, going in, that this myth is not my creation. It's not the invention of John Lash, not by a long shot. But I am the only scholar who has completely restored this myth, which I consider to be the directing myth for the human species. And the Gnostics themselves and the, the ancient seers who, who developed it also considered it as such. Now, one of the interesting things about this myth, and, and of course, understand that I mean myth in this sense as a story of power and magic and a true story presented in a poetic or metaphorical form. I mean myth in the sense of, of a deeper truth not in the sense of, of a fiction or fabrication. I think everyone listening would understand that. Uh, beautiful thing about this myth, Henrik, is that it's an open-ended myth. Now, when you take other myths from any culture, like the myth of uh, Ragnarok, of the, of the Gatadamarung, or the end-of-the-world myths from Teutonic or Scandinavian mythology, hmm. or when you take the biblical myth of creation, and the coming of the Messiah and the end of the world, uh, all the myths that you can examine that have come down to us have a prescripted end. But this story about the divine Sophia, who is the earth goddess and is, in fact, the emb embodied in the earth, doesn't have an end. It's an open-ended experiment. The myth is an invitation to become involved in a cosmic and supernatural dimension of life and to be conscious agents and participants in the future of the earth itself. This is a tremendous, tremendous concept. And this is where Sophia's correction comes in. Sophia's correction, the word correction, is found in the Nakamadi text as the word deorthosis, D-I-O-R-T-H-O-S-I-S, -I -I which scholars translate as correction but it can also be translated as dual solution or two-form solution. It means the solution or the correction to a problem. And so what is the problem that is described in this Sophianic myth that is due to be corrected? Well, the problem is that the goddess Sophia, as the myth tells us, conceived that there could be a divine experiment with humanity, with our species. And she had a particular idea of how this experiment would go. And the way that we are living now, the way that we, the place that we find ourselves on Earth currently, is a place in which this divine experiment has gone badly wrong. <laughs> in other words, I think that even without extensive argument, any person with a, with a kind of common sense and also a feeling of compassion for uh, other human beings would understand that something is very wrong in the way we're living on this planet. Something is very wrong about where civilization has taken us. Something is very wrong about the way we do business and the way we treat each other. And the, the tremendous degree of secrecy and manipulation that permeates our world 
yeah. something is real is telling us that something is really really wrong here. And the beautiful one of the beautiful aspects of the Sophianic myth is that it addresses this situation. And Sophia's correction is actually the solution to this situation. But I would add, and, I, and, and, and I'm very happy that, that you've chosen that as the theme and title for this interview, because we're going to weave in and out of, of this theme. This is our master theme. This is our guiding theme. And I just want to say at the outset that the beautiful thing about the correction that humanity can now achieve is that it is a cooperative correction made with the earth goddess. It's not something that we as human beings just do on our own. We finally straighten out, figure out what's wrong, figure out where all the, the secrecy and deception are coming from, and clear things up. Certainly, that's possible. But the beautiful part of the Sophianic myth is it offers us the opportunity to clean up our act and bring humanity back into the true path of our divine experiment with the earth goddess in actual interactivity and communication with her. Mm. And, and I call that interactivity with Gaia, Gaia Sophia, planetary tantra. It's just the name that I put on the practice of that interactivity and communication. And we stand now as a species, on the threshold of planetary tantra. How so? Why? Why now? What? What is? Uh, what? What are the properties of this, uh, John? There are two particular reasons why planetary tantra would be happening now and would be possible now. Three, three, three particular factors actually. One of them is that we are coming to the end of a great cosmic cycle, which is the cycle of the precession of the zodiac sure you know what that is, and many of your speakers and interview people have talked about it. That's right. According to my calculation, which is based on the Dendera Zodiac, in correlation with other uh, Maya, Aztec, uh, and Hindu chronologies, the great cosmic clock of the Zodiac, the great processional cycle, ends in 2216. I choose that date because that's the date when the winter solstice aligns with the galact the point toward the galactic center. The, the, the location of the winter solstice is cr currently about two or two and a half, two to three degrees offline from the galactic center. When the winter solstice aligns exactly with the galactic center, that is the zero hour on the cosmic clock as it was calculated in ancient times. And so it becomes possible at the very, in the last 200 years of this vast cycle of 26,000 years to make a tremendous leap and ampl amplification in human experience and to actually recapitulate our past, see the errors of the past, jump beyond those errors and move into a, a period of rapid amplification and acceleration of human consciousness in these last 200 years, which are called technically Kali Yuga. So, so John, th this is, sorry to, to interrupt, but I want to ask you here, this, that means that this is connected then, in other words, to something physical, a, a, a cosmic alignment being the, the matter of, the, of our solar system, if you will, lining up with the center of the galaxy, correct? This opportunity for planetary tantra today, right now, and this opportunity for interactive magic with the planetary uh, goddess, is deeply physical. It is deeply physical in many ways. We're going to get into that through this conversation. I hope to be able to elucidate it for you. These anomalies that we're seeing are indications of the physical breakthrough into interactivity with Sophia. Hmm. And so it's